Yeah, welcome to DBA TV, where we discuss everything international trade. Uh, in this series, you are going to be learning about what each of the Nigerian states have to offer as far as export is concerned. You know, I have maintained that Nigerian states are billionaires in dollars and that they can be self-sufficient. But, you know, because a number of governors comes in with not the intention of generating income, but with the intention of sharing the money. Uh, but in this particular episode, we have put together a series of videos for all the Nigerian states from Abia to Zamfara. And this will enable the new governors that are coming in or the new administration in different states of the country to be able to take a cue from what we've shared in this video, which, by the way, covers the peculiarity of each state apart from the preamble. It talks about the profile of the profit, oh, sorry, of the debt <laughs> and income of the state. It talks about the potential of the state. It talks about the purchaser of the product the state have to offer. And of course, the pro pro exportable product and also the proposal we have for the state and how the state can directly profit from exporting raw materials, manufactured goods, uh, solid minerals, and agri commodity. I believe this will be of interest to you and maybe to your governor or the commissioner, wherever it is in your state. Thank you very much for joining. Enjoy your, uh, yourself as you learn through what maybe your state is what we are looking at today, what Nigerian state have to offer. Happy listening. Thank you very much. So as usual, every week we have a preamble, just introductory to what we are trying to do. Then peculiarity of liver state, then profile of debt and income of, of liver state, then the potential opportunity for export, the purchaser for the product that can be exported from river state, and the value of the export market. Of course, the proposal that we have to Governor Wiki and the incoming governor <laughs> of River State, and then how can River State profit directly from this export of product in his state? All right, preamble. Through exports, River State can avoid over depending on federal location. Through export, the state can boost the GDP, create opportunity for SME to grow, reduce dependence on domestic market, and export proceeds and grow revenue for the state. Farming and rally can become more lucrative because of export, gain global recognition because our, our market share. It can make the state become home of creativity and innovation. The traditional catalyst for the state, that's what it's supposed to be doing. Job creation for youth in the state. Can be said to know the value of what the state has as competitive advantage. It can be said to leave for other state to follow. Export has what it takes to make this state less dependent on federal government. It can help the state to have numerous incentives, opportunity to maximize the indigene of the state of this abroad. Commercial education in the state is possible through export, and I'll be talking about that later on. It can help the state to keep the league of states, depending on wasting assets like oil. It can help to revive the economy of the state, slow down rural and urban migration. That's opportunity for export in the state. Realization of the added capacity of the companies in the state. Viability of the state are boosted. Well, creation for citizens of the state. Can the state extract the product or potential that can be found in the state for export and yearn for more improvement of competition and zeroing on the area of strength of the state? So, what do you see in River State? People can choose to see unemployment in River State. And we'll look at the data today, the status of unemployment in River State, the fact that about 3.9 of the 5.3 million are in labor force, even though some of them are not gainfully employed. So that's the reality. But is that what you focus on? 
You find that there's poverty in River State or there's frustration in the state. It'd be good to focus on the opportunity on farming and opportunities on mining and opportunities on the population of the state. Peculiarity of this state first before we look at the profile. River State was created out of the former Eastern region in 1967 by General Yakubu Gowon. Baeza was cut of the state. SI's creation in 1996. Its capital, the biggest city is Prakot, located in south south of Nigeria, covered 11,077 square kilometers. The inland part of River State consists of tropical rainforest, and that's the advantage of this state. Beyond the oil it has, towards the coast, the typical river, river environment, featured many mangrove swamps. River State was part of the Oil River Protectorate from 1985 to, 1980, to 1893. When it became part of the Niger Coast Protectorate. In 1900, the region was merged with the Charter Territory of Rochan, Royal Niger Company to form the colony of the Southern Nigeria. Parakot is, is its capital city and regarded as the center of Nigerian oil and gas industry. I remember one of the former presidents said he made the money in Parakot, they share it in Abuja and spend it in Lagos. <laughs> River State is bounded on the south of the Atlantic Ocean to the north by Imo, Abia, and Anambra State, to the east by Aqua Ibon, and to the west by Bayelsa and Delta State. It's nicknamed River State, treasure base of the nation. And it's on the Nigeria coastline and has a number of seaports. Proud to the discovery of oil in River State, agriculture was the mainstay of the economy. 39% of the state's total land mass is suitable for crop cultivation. River State has a lucrative fishing industry. Opportunity for investment is available in energy, tourism, healthcare, land manufacturing, and a Greek business. It's covered 10,575 kilometer, kilometer square or square kilometer. It has 23 local government. Population is about 7.8 million people. It's quite a heavy population for politicians. Vegetation, tropical rainforest and monsoon. Main crop, cassava, rubber, oil palm, ro coconut, raffia palm, rice, yam, maize, melon, and vegetable. Mineral resources, crude oil, silica, guns, glass sand, and clay. What is the competitive advantage of this state? Large debit of crude, second largest seaport in Nigeria, third largest oil producing state, center for Nigeria oil and gas industry, tourism and wildlife, biggest oil refinery in Nigeria, 34,000 barrels per day. Opportunity exists in oil and gas manufacturing, cassava, crude oil, rice, education, energy, healthcare, transportation, and rubber. This state was nicknamed, was named Port Arcot by Sir Fred Lugard in honor of Lewis Vernon, Vernon Port Arcot, sorry, Vernon Harcourt, then the Secretary of State for the colony. And that's where the name for that court comes from because of the post order that, that is there. Working population is about 5.3 as of 2020, Q3 labor force statistics. Those not in labor force, 1.4 million. Unemployment rate, 41.59%. And underemployment is 
profile. Let's look at the income and idea of this thing. As of 2020, the idea was 117, which is very good. A number of uh, oil companies have their offices there. So they have a lot of idea coming up from these oil companies and oil servicing firms. The federal allocation is about 149 same year. So to a large extent, this state is able to match a reasonable closeness between FAC and IGR. And the state is also fighting to collect the VAT himself. <laughs> and already in court. Now, this state has a debt profile of about 303 billion naira. When you combine the domestic debt with the foreign debt. Look at the income structure. 43% is IGR, 56% is FAC. Sincerely, River State is among the few states that is very close in terms of revenue and what they're getting from federal government. Uh, you will notice also the space state is spending so much on capital expenditure. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, for if you're following River State, you'll have seen a lot of commissioning of First flyover, second flyover, third flyover, third flyover, six flyover. <laughs> so number 12 flyover. <laughs> so they said that the governor is called Mr. Project. But he must be commended, actually. Because, I mean, there are other governors in that state before him. And I'm not sure any of them are perform as much as he has done. The fact that he's spending more money on capital expenditure is very important for me. Now, look at this. River State is also one of the few states that the operating expense is under IGR. I mean, kudos to Wiki, whichever way you He might have his issues though, but kudos. River State can survive and pay salary and take care of all its expenses without Abuja. Among the few states in Nigeria that is already independent of Abuja, which is what all states must attain, but the plea in this session is to get the state to begin to look beyond oil to generate more money from other opportunity for export available in this state. Let's see what budget have to say about river state. According to budget report of Nigerian state, once again, the treasure base of the nation retained its position at the top of the 2021 State Physical Policy in, uh, Performance Index. Despite shock from COVID-19 pandemic to its revenue, year on year, its IGR saw a decline of 16% from 140 to 117. So even that 117 is a decline. Nevertheless, the state IGR was still the second largest in Nigeria, accounting for 9.65%. 9 of total 1.21 trillion IGR of the 36 states in Nigeria. It was surpassed only by Lagos, who had 418 billion in Nigeria. The state need, we need to work hard in further boosting the IGR, especially as Edwin from COVID-19 pandemic significantly affects federally distributed revenue, causing the state gross fact allocated to decline by 11.46%. From 1.69 in, in 2019 to 1.49 in 2020, although crude oil prices are recovering, the global push for energy transmission from fossil fuel like crude oil to clean energy means the days of relatively easy oil revenue are numbered. 
Real estate capital expenditure declined from 24% to 21 billion in 2019 to 160 2020 because of COVID. However, for the second year in a row, the state still emerged as one of the five states in Nigeria that prioritize capital infrastructure. Lagos, I think Ebony, and I think uh, Kaduna, and of course, River State. And they prioritize capital expenditure on infrastructure over operating expenses. Furthermore, of the state's 168 capital expenditure, economic sector received the highest priority with 85 billion, followed by special head, which received 31. The social sector, administrative sector, and law and justice received 23, 20, and 7.21, respectively. The state also had third largest per capita spending on, cap on uh, infrastructure, highest third per capita spending on capital expenditure, 20,000 exceeding a boy. And even Lagos, with per capita spending of 23, so they only exceeded by a boy and Lagos with a boy 23. A boy is doing a lot in capital expenditure also. Even though they don't have as much money, but they're doing a lot. And of course, Lagos, 21. And I think because the governor of Ebony is an engineer, he's a registered engineer, and he said he can't joke with infrastructure, and I want to ensure his state have a lot of infrastructure. Preliminary evaluation indicate that Minister of Education and Minister of Health received 2.8 billion and 1.5 billion, respectively, for capital expenditure. Why River State Government House received 27.7 billion for capital expenditure through security vote. Envelope, in addition to another 16.1, received through the main government house capital expenditure envelope. Furthermore, the social sector received only 20.46 billion, a significant decline of 63.07% from 64 billion spent in 2019. Citizen and society are encouraged to ensure that expenditure received by different state government agencies that reported in the state audit report are translating to value for the people and tangible projects on ground. Right. We are on to the potential. What are the potential opportunities for export? In River State. What a potential opportunity for export in River State. Prior to discovery of oil in the commercial city, in, com in commercial country rather, in 1951, a Greek was the primary occupation of the people of River State. Around 19th century, when the Industrial Revolution reached its peak in England, the area was then referred to as Oil River Protectorate, and this was due to abundant palm oil and canal, which basically constituted the main revenue source of the country. In a sample survey carried out by Federal Minister of Agri and Natural Resources, about 40% of the rural inhabitants were committed to farming. In 1983, River State is one of the leading states in production of yam. Cassava, cocoa, maize, rice, beans. About 39%, that's 760,000 hectares of land in the state, particularly in the upland area, is suitable for cultivation. Of course, a number of the land also have been polluted. That's why, particularly this area, were mentioned because it has not been polluted like the other area. Major cash crop again include oil palm, rubber, cocoa, coconut, raffia, palm, jute. Other crop grown for food include vegetable, melon, pineapple, mango, pepper, banana, and plantain. The fishing industry is an important sector in River State. Besides being lucrative, fishing is also a favorite pastime activity. There are approximately 270 species of fish existing 
with many artisanal fishermen in the riverine areas. The state provides valuable seafood, such as crab, oyster, shrimp, and sea snail, and others, among others, rather. Vertebrate like birds, mammals, and reptiles are also found in the region. Fishing and farming are the principal occupation of the region. Plantain, banana, cassava, oil palm, coconut, rubber trees, raffia, citrus are grown. Large amounts of crude oil and natural gas are found in the river, delta, and major state mineral. Major oil terminal exists offshore from brass and bony. Petroleum refinery have been established at Paracourt and near Alessa Element. Paracourt, the state capital and one of the nation's largest port, is on the southern terminus of the eastern branch of Nigeria Railway mainline. Remember, cassava, rubber, oil palm, coconut, raffia, palm, rice, yam, maize, and main crop of this state. Who are the purchaser of this product? And what volume do they buy? Let's start the purchaser. For corn produced in the state, the market size is 36.3 billion. From Japan to South Korea, to Vietnam to Iran, to China, Chinese Taipei, to China, to Malaysia, to Mexico, to Canada, Spain, Germany, Netherlands, even in Africa, Egypt, Morocco, Algeria, Colombia, Peru, in South America. You know, in Africa, 3.73 billion demand for corn alone. From Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, South Africa, and the like. Then cassava, a variant of cassava, 2.1 billion. From China to Vietnam, to Netherlands, to Germany, to France, to UK, to Canada, to US. And even in Africa, Rwanda is the largest importer of this product, $19 million. Coconut, fresh and dry, $1.21 billion. China, Malaysia, Thailand, India, Singapore, Netherlands, UK, US, Canada, Australia, Brazil, Germany, France, a major buyer. And in Africa, $42 million from Egypt. South Africa, Algeria, Morocco, Senegal, and Sudan. How about rice? The market size for rice is $24.7 billion. $24.7 billion. Imagine Benin Republic buying 3% of rice produced in the world. A lot of those rice coming to Nigeria. But it's the largest importer of rice. Out of the 24 billion, Africa alone is taking on about 6 billion. And guess what? 12% of that is imported by a country that is lower than Lagos in population. Your guess is as good as mine. Those people that are coming into Nigeria, those people that are coming into Nigeria. <laughs> so in Africa, Benin Republic, Senegal, Cameroon, Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, Ghana, Egypt, Togo, Angola, Guinea, Mozambique, Somalia, Madagascar, major import of rice in Africa. These are market for river state. How about palm oil? How about palm oil? Immediately. Look at palm oil. Look at the opportunity for palm oil. Can you see palm oil? $29.3 billion. $29.3 billion. Palm oil alone. $29.3 billion. And this state have a massive land for this. 
So these are low-hanging fruit for river state. So make them extra money and increase development in the state. From India to Pakistan, to China, to Netherlands, to Spain, to Italy, to United States. These are major importers of palm oil. I heard that uh, Malaysia is one of the major exporters of palm oil. I think they are stealing from Medo State. <laughs> but today they are a major exporter. But today they are a major exporter. But today they are a major exporter. Look at even in Africa. You know, $4.28 billion. The demand of palm oil in Africa is huge. Even Nigeria import palm oil, even though we can produce it. From Kenya to Egypt to Tanzania, to South Africa, Benin Republic, Ghana, Angola, Togo, Djibouti, Senegal, Somalia, a major importer of this product. And these are products that River State can use to generate additional income. Let's round off with, okay, we we still have rubber and coconut. So let's do rubber. $13.6 billion. China, Japan, India, Malaysia, South Korea, Vietnam, a major importer of this product. From Germany to Spain, to United States, to Canada, Mexico, Brazil. In Africa, once it's $2 million, in demand for rubber. From South Africa to Egypt, Algeria, Eswatini, Kenya, Ethiopia, Tunisia, Morocco. Coconut oil. Remember this state produced coconut. The market size of coconut oil, $4.73 billion. Netherlands, Germany, China, Malaysia, Japan, United States, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, a major importer of this product. In Africa, South Africa, Egypt, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Kenya, Mali, Somalia, a major importer of this product. The second decide to take on palm oil or coconut oil. And my proposal is simple. Looking at the value chain, for example, you have production, harvesting and transport, primary processing, secondary processing, primary processing and storage, secondary processing and packaging. Secondary processing and packaging. Marketing and sales, logistics, export, and distribution. You have a station in which SME one, only one SME is doing this. Sometimes you might have SME one, two, and three. It doesn't even matter if there are three. As long as they are SME, they have an inefficient value chain operator, low processing capacity and low output, few job creation, low quality and packaging, high cost of production, and non-competitive product in the export market. So my recommendation is that the state consider some of this money can be used to build a central processing center for a product the state want to produce and known for. Maybe on the palm oil or coconut, whatever it is. But the idea is this, to get the SME to keep producing and produce more to get the SM to produce and produce more. Now, in addition to this, we now have a large colossal organization who will be receiving 
from, um, raw materials from the SME and add value to them on behalf of SME 2. So SME 2 buy raw materials from SME 1, take it to large corporate, big organization, who we process and package for them in their brand. SME 2 can focus on marketing, logistics, and export. You know what this will do? Create efficient value chain operator, high processing capacity and high output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production, and competitive products in the export market, increase job creation, decrease inequality, and decrease insecurity. Because we'll have empowered the SME to be able to produce more the raw material because there's a huge demand and the Korea SME too, to focus on market development, let someone else worry about production and packaging. In order to support exporter in his, this state to enter export market in Africa, Europe, and America in a secure and sustainable way, the state can do the following. Partner with representative at destination to market and secure contract, set up warehouses for pickup by wholesale and retailer at destination, set up an entity, agent, or distributor at destination, partner with an independent agent or distributor at destination, organize and sponsor manufacturer for exhibition in the export market. For exhibition in the export market. Profit. How can the state make profit directly from export? Let's assume the state use about 50% of the 773,000 hectares of land to cultivate palm cannabis. With a possible yield of 18 metric ton per hectare, we can generate 3.8 million tons of palm oil. Of palm kernel. Now, if we have to produce palm oil from this at 90% processing yield, we can have about 727,000 metric tons of palm oil at a sales price of 1,600. We can have 1.18 billion dollars. If compared to dot naira at 450, that's 490 billion. If we remove the cost of farming, cost of processing. Cost of export, we can see how a reasonable amount of this money being retained by the state. Now, the idea is this this state budget in 2022, this state budget in 2022 was $483 billion. And from export of palm oil, the state can generate what it needs for its budget. The state can generate what it needs to fund its budget. How can it make this happen? Look at this. The state must first of all partner with a private firm that can help. that can help like Okomua, for example having support the farmers to produce to farm more palm produce and then harvest them partner with the private sector to process them of course train the farmer preventative support Give them a guarantee to buy up whatever they produce. Now, you know what happened afterwards? This product can be exported after processing. Documents sent to the buyer, payment made. The farmer can be paid. All other costs can be deducted. Even the partner can be paid. And the state will see more than enough to take care of development in the state. 
The impact of the suggested model for the state go beyond generation of revenue via export. That's the humongous impact on employment generation and increased economic activity in the state. This, in my opinion, is a more effective and efficient and journey model for the about find the economy of any state in Nigeria. And this model can be replicated by federal government at the federal level, especially for the exportation of solid mineral. All right, thank you very much, everyone. See you next week as we go to Sokoto. Have a wonderful weekend and Merry Christmas in advance.